What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and during the last stream we worked on a vehicle hovercraft. So I was working on a hovercraft that was rather large and uh, eventually is going to hover at a block height of 200 or come down to a block height of 20 and be able to pick up vehicles and sort of transport them around the map. But it also has a whole bunch of autopilot functions built into it and part of doing an autopilot in Scrap Mechanic is that you need to use some sort of device to measure the tilt angle or keep your tilt relatively stable. Uh, flying vehicles and scrap mechanic like to tilt randomly unless you have them perfectly balanced and even if you do have them perfectly balanced when you go to do turns and stuff like that uh, the the physics gets thrown off so you need to have what's called a gyroscope to actually measure the tilt of a vehicle and a gyroscope is really really cool if you guys don't know much about me i will tell you right off the bat i'm a huge nerd when it comes to math and science uh, that's probably why i went and got a degree in engineering and in part of that degree i spent a lot of time taking a lot of courses in physics and really appreciating how physics works and a gyro is a real life thing it's it's used in real life all over the place uh, in such places as the space station you can actually use a gyro to control the entire rotation of the space station because there's no other forces in space it's really really cool stuff but basically a gyro works on the principle of angular momentum angular momentum is really quite a simple principle and we can demonstrate it really quite easily in scrap mechanic and coincidentally the game actually has angular momentum which is really cool so all we need to do is take a bearing and put it on the end of an arm like we've got here and hopefully this is enough i don't know if it will be but it should be and we can do this with a wheel we can do this really with any sort of weight are these heavy these are medium weight. You know what, let's do this with steel blocks because they're going to be heavier. So any sort of free spinning object like this, and if we can just get this, there we go. Right, so we've got this this metal weight on the end of an arm, right? And they're both, they're both free spinning right now, you can see, but we'll change that in a sec. So if we take a gas motor, because it spins faster, and we put the gas motor attached to this bearing here, but not to this bearing, and we increase the speed. You can, okay, we don't even have to go that fast. So you can see what's happening though. As this spins, it actually is creating a force on this, this uh, bearing point here. And so you'll actually notice too, if you're really paying attention, they're actually spinning in opposite directions. So the wheel is spinning one way and the entire arm is going around the other way. And this is angular momentum basically in a nutshell. This principle really comes down to that famous saying in science, which is uh, for each action, there is always an equal and opposite reaction. And that's basically what we're getting here. And scrap mechanic actually kind of follows that principle. There's some friction going on as well. You know, bearings have a little bit of friction in the game, blocks beside each other. So it's not going to be perfect, but essentially we can get a gyroscopic force. A gyroscope in real life uses that same principle, the spinning wheel and the conservation of momentum to actually maintain the spinning wheel in the same orientation no matter what. So if, if you can imagine, if we take a wheel like that, a system like that with a spinning wheel and we have it spin very, very quickly, it's creating a force in the opposite direction. Now, if we have another spinning wheel spinning in the opposite direction, they're counteracting each other but they don't want to move unless they have a very strong force that can overcome the initial force that's already on the wheels. It's, you know, again, I encourage you, there's tons of good articles that talk about angular momentum if you are curious, but let's just get into how to make a gyro here just so you guys can understand really how you can use this in scrap mechanic and how you can use this principle. Now, I am going to say right off the bat, this isn't a new concept at all. I'm not the first person to have come up with this. There are a lot of different gyros on scrap mechanic workshop and there are a lot of them that are very small and compact and the one we're going to make today is relatively large. I'm going to show you how to make a gyro in three dimensions using some sensors to actually sense the angle you're at. And this can be used in flying creations and all sorts of things. Actually, my bigger flying creations all have one. It allows you to create self-stabilization on a creation without having to use uh, suspension glitches or any infinite stabilizers or anything like that. So we've got this uh, test rig here, uh, nothing really to it. And you can see here we've got six motors each with uh, an OR gate attached to them and then a button attached to the seat. And so this gives us our six degrees of freedom. Uh, so we've got, you know, tilt to the left and we can completely roll that, tilt to the right, no problem on a double bearing setup. And then we can roll the whole platform in the middle in the opposite direction. And then we can spin that platform as well if we use this last one. So we're gonna get right into building a gyro. We're just gonna jump up on top of this and we're gonna build one. So 
the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to build a little bit of a stand. And it's very important when you build a gyro that you make everything symmetrical. Uh, gyros require a perfect balance of force. And so if you have an uneven weight on it somewhere, you could potentially screw up everything. Uh, you don't necessarily need double bearings, but it, it does help keep everything stable. And you know what? This is actually probably better to build on a lift because we need free floating bearings and we're going to have to weld stuff together. So we're going to start here. This will be the initial gyro shape. So it's 13 across. Okay, so we're going to weld those two together, uh, which means we need to go out six in these directions just to keep the size perfectly square. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we've got it perfectly square there if we just connect these up together. And there we go. So we should have a perfectly square plate thing here. And this is going to free float in that direction. But actually, I'm realizing now uh, we've already screwed up. I've already made a mistake. We actually need a bearing to counteract the uh, rotation. So this yellow plate can rotate. So we're just going to put a free floating bearing here and have this attached to a frame like this. And we'll just put that like so. So that entire piece could rotate freely and we'll just hit this over with a hammer. Okay, and we will just push this down on here like so. So that should be all welded up. Perfect. So now this piece can free rotate and then this can free tilt. And then all we need again is a another bearing to free tilt in this direction. And so now, no matter what, the entire center piece, this, this piece that we're building right here, can actually free float relative to the piece around it, the box piece. So hold on, we'll paint some stuff here just so it makes I'm just talking piece on piece on piece. Okay. So really simply, let's let's get this straight here. So this blue piece can free float on the, uh, let's go green. So this green frame, right? So this green frame can free rotate on the yellow stand. The blue piece can free rotate on the green frame. And the, let's go with the orange piece here in the middle. We haven't used orange yet. The orange piece can free rotate among the blue piece. So if we take this whole thing off the lift, yep, let it just pop out of the ground there. You can see there, uh, we can put this on whatever angle we want and it'll work a little bit with gravity you can see there so the orange piece is kind of wanting to stay stable with gravity but uh it won't always stay stable with gravity it's it is free floating with weight but it's not necessarily going to stay there so we'll put a center bar here on the orange and we'll paint that and we'll put a single uh beam guy here like this we'll put a single rotating disc underneath this orange frame just like so and it doesn't have to be, you know, fancy. I'm just putting some metal blocks on it to make it a little bit heavier. The heavier your disc is, the more uh, gyroscopic force it creates. And we'll connect this all to a gas engine. So we'll just put a, you know, we'll just put the gas engine. Actually, I don't want to interfere with anything there. So we'll just put it on the outside and we'll just hook it up here. And we don't need to have it. Uh, we'll just set it to max speed and it can just be always on. doesn't really matter. So if we turn this on, you can actually see what's happening. So once it's... Once it, you know what, let's, let's just put this on a lift. So you can see as the gyro spins in the middle, the, the weighted disc spins in the middle, we're actually free spinning on that bearing. And this is, again, it comes down to the, that whole conservation of momentum and force and everything else. And Scrap Mechanic, although it's not perfect, it does a pretty good job of showing how this would work in real life. So now, of course, if we want to stop it from free spinning like that, we need to put a counter spinning rotor of the exact same weight on top of the gyro and that'll that'll prevent everything from happening. So let's just get up here. Uh, we'll just use a seat real quick. We'll remove that after because we don't want to leave that there and we'll just put a bearing and like so. And again, exact same weight. So it has the exact same speed and, uh, and force and everything else. And we will put this on here. And perfect. And now we've got your basic gyroscopic mechanism. So these you can see spinning in opposite directions. And now you can see they spin. They still create that force, but the green bar doesn't actually rotate at all. This is essentially your, your gyroscopic mechanism. So now if we go and sit in our, in our seat here and we press any one of the buttons, that orange platform will always stay perfectly level with gravity unless we like hit it with enough force to offset the force on the gyroscope. That's, that's really how it goes. So for example, if we rotate the entire platform in one direction, you can see the orange bar will always stay 
Oh man, we barely clear that too. That's amazing. But it will always stay perfectly level with gravity. No matter what. No matter what the tilt angle of our creation is, assuming the creation is, is the frame that we're tilting, it'll always stay level. And this works in all three dimensions. So we can do it like this. We can rotate it. Oh, that's the same direction. We can rotate it this way. You can see there still staying level. Uh, and we can rotate it this way. And you can see there the green bar still staying level and still staying tilted. So no matter what, we can tilt it, re and you can do combinations too, right? Like we can do this combination, that combination, no matter what, that orange bar will stay level. And this allows us to do all sorts of crazy, crazy maneuvers. So if you can imagine right now, imagine we're on a plane and our plane is the red body. Well, if we put sensors on that orange body, then we could predict exactly where our plane is and exactly how far it's moved. Oh, I think it just clipped the edge there of the frame. So you see we clipped the edge of the frame, it uh, offset that that piece we'll just put it back on the frame and so how you could use this in a sensor system is is really quite simple so let's set up the sensor system to counteract whatever movements we make we're going to need six sensors so we're going to do sensors right here on the green bar these are going to counteract the rotation so they're going to be set to a range of one which means right now the green bar as soon as we rotate well, well if we go here and we sit on this as soon as we rotate i believe these are five and six so as soon as we rotate five and six, you can see there it's it's activating the sensors and it's pushing because right now the sensors don't actually trigger anything. But let's say we have the sensors hooked into the OR gate. So I believe, I don't know which one's which, so we'll just take a guess. So let's put five there and six here. Oh, no, I have them backwards. Okay, not a problem. So we'll just reverse the two angles here. And now you can see no matter what, as I tilt, let's say five, as that sensor picks up the green, it corrects it. Right, so as uh, because I'm using OR gates, I'm holding five, which means now it turns on six when that sensor goes on, so it basically fights me. But if I let go, it will always straighten out. So no matter where we go now, we could actually have our vehicle automatically adjust its rotation to stay in al alignment with wherever the gyro is. Or we could manually override it and then keep it back in that alignment. So we could use this if we wanted a vehicle to drive straight, let's say, or something like that. Uh, we could have the gyro always keep it straight in that orientation. If we want to do the orange one, uh, same thing. We could use the orange one as well. Of course, with the orange one, it's a little bit different because it tilts on this side. You can see there it tilts down here, it tilts there. Uh, we could put these on controllers. So when I was doing it in the stream, I wanted really sensitive movements. I didn't want a lot of play. So I actually would mount the sensor to a controller as recommended by, of course, our good old mod blue frame. So we can see we can put this, this piece here and we have to equalize it on the other side uh, to balance the weight just to make sure the system is always level. And we can put a sensor just like this uh just like there we go like that and like this and if we tilt these up on a controller which we should be able to just mount on the outside of the frame here yeah just like doesn't really matter i'll upload this frame to the workshop in case you guys are curious i know a lot of people were asking during the stream uh, how to make a gyro and wanted a vi video on it so I decided to actually do that but let's say we give this a 10 degree tilt and of course you'd have to play with this depending on the size of your gyro and and how everything's configured but if we give this a 10 degree tilt now when this orange bar tilts down this sensor is going to pick it up and that one's going to pick it up on the other end and so these ones are hooked into uh which ones are these the orange are going to be countered by the red which are one and two, which are those two. You can see the orange one is free floating in this direction, which is the opposite of that. So one and two, so we can hook one of these into this sensor and one of these into this sensor. And so in theory, if we rotate this way now, you can see there, it now fights me. So as we get within those sensor ranges, the sensor picks up the orange bar and I can't, I'm holding the button. It still won't let me move past that point. So it's going to try and keep me stable. And of course, we could adjust that angle that it gives us, that tolerance that it gives us, the maximum angle we're allowed here, just by adjusting uh, how far that controller is. So then, of course, the final direction is the blue, and uh, the blue, same thing as the orange. We just have to mount the blue a little bit external because the blue is free-floating on the green frame, technically. So we would actually have to extend our green frame out here, which we're going to do like so. And it won't matter that these can't free rotate past those sensors there on the ground because these sensors on the ground are going to prevent the green frame from going past them anyways. And so we can just do the same thing here. Now we could do this again uh, with the method on the controller, but for now 
we're just going to mount it on a straight sensor and just sort of demonstrate how it would work. But we could, of course, mount this on a controller, angle the controller up to the beam, and give us a little bit more accuracy. Uh, but we're just, we're just going to do it this way because it's really nice and simple. And, of course, got to make sure we keep that weight even on both sides so everything is nice and symmetrical, which it is. And these ones, of course, would go to the last two, which would be the three and four. And again, hopefully I got these right. If not, we'll just reverse them. Totally got them wrong. Yep. Okay, hold on. Got to just reverse three and four, which are these two. There we go. So three. There we go. So now you can see as the sensor picks up that blue, it stops us from rotating. So now we've created a stability system that doesn't use an infinite stabilizer glitch. Again, this is not anything new. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not the first person to come up with this in Scrap Mechanic, but I hope this kind of demo really helps you guys understand just how to make something very, very simple in all three dimensions that would allow you to sense rotational angles. And so the, the space station would use something similar to this, aircraft use something similar to this, obviously not this, but a very similar principle. And it's a very, very useful thing to do in Scrap Mechanic. Instead of using an infinite stabilizing glitch, which obviously is much more compact and allows you to do a lot of things, this kind of a design lets you create a logic-based system that allows you to sense angles. So you don't even need to use this for controls or for stability necessarily. Obviously, in the case of the vehicle I have, the gyro is mounted rigid with the body, and as we detect uh, angles, it'll adjust with thrusters to adjust the whole body. But we could, in fact, use this to do all sorts of things like autopilots, uh, automatic angle adjustment. You could have banked turns, for example. You could have your vehicle go into a banked turn. You could have it, you know, we can go into a diagonal banked turn and it'll still put us back to that center position. You can see it doesn't put us perfectly center because of, again, that tolerance on the sensors. The closer you have your sensors to that dead even point, the better it is. If you are curious about how to make one of these in Scrap Mechanic, I will put this up on the workshop just as sort of a test rig for you to see how it works. But it is a very, very simple principle. It's just, uh, you know, two opposite spinning weights. And again, the heavier the weight, the more of an effect this thing will have in terms of maintaining itself. So make sure you guys check this out if you're interested. And of course, hit that like button and that subscribe button while you're at it. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.